Hey all, welcome to Plackers Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna have a quick look at something you can either make or buy that's gonna make maintaining your idiot proof reef tank even easier. Alright, so I've been running the Idiot Proof Reef Tank for a number of months now and um, one thing that's starting to give me the willies a little bit and it's strange because I quite like them on my other tanks is the filter sock in this back section here. Accessing that filter sock seems, because it's not really a sump, it's kind of more a rear chamber. When I pull that out, it kind of disrupts things. I get a lot of uh, particles flowing through the tank and the water box, they're a strange fitment of the sock so you kind of have to have the water box specific sock. Um, it just doesn't give me a lot of options. Plus, now that I've got the skimmer in the back section, the return pump and ATO in here, um, our little bio balls in this section, if I want to run any other media, and I'm not necessarily saying I do just yet, but if the option comes up or there's something else I wanna add in the future, I need some more space to put some things in. So I had a bit of a look online and I came across uh, a company that I've used for some accessories, my Red Sea Max over in America called Intank. And they make this really cool little chamber that replaces the filter sock and you can put some filter wool on there and you can put other various medias under in the other chambers of that, which I thought was really, really cool. Now following on from the theme with this tank like we did with the um, lid, where the, the gold class standard for the lid is probably the top lids lid in, made in America, but I wanted to keep everything as local as possible as I could with this tank. So I had a look to see what I could do about getting a chamber or a, a media holder built locally. So I reached out to my buddy Jason who does some acrylic manufacturing um, amongst other plastics and said, Jason, I wanna build something like the in-tank media chamber but I wanna build it locally. You reckon this is something you could do? Before you know it, the man's ringing my doorbell and he's got a solution for me. Let's get it on camera now. And this is the chamber he built for us here. Really nifty little unit. Well, I'm gonna take the filter sock section out and this will slide down in there. It'll allow me to put filter wool up here or down there or anywhere we want, as well as being able, if I put filter wool up here, it'll allow me to put other media in there and then other media in there if we need to. It's got a little handle here, so it'll sit up on the edge and I can just pull it up and out of the tank nice and easily, or I can just lift it up far enough, pull the uh, filter wool out, put new filter wool in, slide it back down and we're good to go. He's also made it so the back chamber is uh, sealed off and the sides are sealed off, so the water has to go through it before getting down the bottom and then going into the next chamber, which forces all the water through the media, makes it very, very efficient. And he's also made it so you can actually remove panels, um, which if you wanted to run, I don't know, something really tall, <laughs> take that one out, you could run something really tall and just sit it in the bottom, or you could take that bottom chamber out, you can add, even if you just want to clean these chambers, it makes it a lot easier. So. It's a pretty nifty little unit. I mean, at the end of the day, it's fairly basic um, plastic. I say basic, I didn't have to make it. Um, it's a fairly basic concept though. And basically it allows me to grab filter wool like this, cut off into little sections, put that in there and that replaces my filter sock. So I can just pull them out, chuck them away rather than trying to clean the filter sock or buy multiple of the official water box filter socks. So I figured I'd get the camera I was going to just drop this in, but uh, the Idiot Proof Reef Tank is a uh, special in Parker's Reefs where the whole community follows along with it. So rather than just pulling their filter sock out and putting this in and then uh, people going, hang on, what's that hanging in the back chamber? I thought I'd grab the camera and take you along for the rides. So I was thinking of just running uh, filter wool in here basically to allow me to avoid having to use filter socks. But then I got thinking, what other media could we run in this? And um, I'm not necessarily saying you need to run media um, in the Idiot Proof Reef Tank. But should the need arise, or if you're wanting to just step it up from a um, idiot proof tank into an intermediate tank, you might want to run something like a ChemiPure Blue, a um, Clear FX Pro. You might want to run like a little bag of Purigen in there. I had a look around the um, fish room and had a look to see what media I've got. I've got some Aquaforest Zeo Stones, Carbon and GFO, and I've got a neat little Ziploc bag that I might just put a little couple of spoons of each in him with a, well, I guess with a small handful of the Zeo stones, put them in this middle chamber here. And I might even put another bit of filter wool down here just to double up the filter wool so we don't get any uh, GFO or carbon or any sort of sediment flowing through. Really more to test out this little back chamber than um, anything else. All right, so I've sped the video up here so you don't have to watch me uh, putting a couple of spoons of uh, carbon and phosphate minus into a uh, little bag for you for too long. 
but I just wanted to show you how much I'm putting in. I've got no idea if this is the right amount or not for this tank. Having the fact that it has not run any media before probably doesn't need all that much, but um, I've got a, a decent chunk of the uh, zeolite stones there because um, I feel like they're, they're a nice simple uh, filtration thing where they just pull out the ammonia before it converts into nitrite and nitrate. Here's me cutting up the uh, filter pads just to fit in the top and bottom. These filter pads are pretty cool. They've got a uh, dual level. They've got a, um, a fine and then a coarse down the bottom. All right, I'm just gonna pull this um, filter sock tray out of the way just because um, hopefully it'll be the last time I have to uh, take this filter sock out. Now, the filter sock is separate from its um, mounting plate, but it does often quite like to sit in there like that. I'm just gonna let it drain as much of that water out as possible. You can see how dirty the filter sock is. These things are pretty tricky to clean, I must admit, especially the small ones like this because they're just so hard to, um, just so hard to get, you know, high pressure water in there. So I'm um, really looking forward to getting the uh, media chamber in there with the filter pads that I can just uh, rip out and throw away. So I won't throw this away because you never know, we may go back to it and the filter chamber won't actually modify the back section at all. This will still sit back in there should I ever need to go back to filter socks. All right, let's see if this uh, chamber fits in. I haven't actually tried it out yet, but um, by the measurements, it should be all good. Oh yeah, like a glove, look at that. Beautiful, now, <laughs> I can actually slide it all the way down or I can hang it onto the side there. I might actually slide it all the way down. Um, I'm happy for the water to pass through that um, bottom section to get to the next chamber. So that's all looking pretty sweet. What I'm gonna do now is load my media in there and um, we'll go from there. Now, one little tip I like to find with the Aquaforest Media, they say not to rinse it, but um, I do like to just give it a uh, gentle soak and some RO first, just to remove some of, the, um, some of the dust and stuff that gets in there. But we'll put that in last because I've got my two filter pads and I just want to um, load them up first. Got the tight fitting one down the bottom as a catch-all and the fairly loose fitting one, which translation is the one I didn't cut perfectly. Up the top, we'll put our bag of media in there. I just want to do without spilling too much, making too much of a mess. Hopefully I didn't go too heavy handed with the media, but I think we'll be right. Should fit in there okay. Ooh, just, I might've gone a little heavy handed with the media, but it will fit. What a beauty. All right, I'll get that out of the way so you can see. And I will slide that down in there. Oh yeah, what a ripper. Beautiful, and just like that, we've got rid of the old filter sock, the filter sock and plate. Now we've got a two level, it's got a fine and then a coarse, sorry, ran the wrong way, a coarse and then a fine filter pad. It's got our media with uh, Zeo stones, GFO and carbon all mixed in together in a bag where the water's gonna be pushed through it. Then we've got another catch-all filter pad down the bottom, which has again got the, the uh, fairly coarse bit on top followed by the fine bit down the bottom. So it catches the big bits first and then the fine bits last. Slides right in and when it's time to change that out, which realistically on this tank is gonna last a fair while, but I'll make it part of the four weekly maintenance to swap that out if I decide to go that way. We may switch to different media, something like the Clear FX Pro, Purigen pads, um, or even um, uh, Chemi Pure Blue could be a good option. And then all I have to do is uh, reach down in here and um, slide the tray out and um, Get my hands on it, there it is. And change anything we need, it's all in there. That's really cool. All right guys, there you have it. It's a minor little upgrade that um, we've done in the Idiot Proof Reef Tank, but I feel like um, it gives us some options with some uh, medias and some mechanical filtration that we didn't have before. I'm absolutely not saying you need to do that to keep basic corals, and then realistically, we don't even need to do it to keep these corals, but you know, isolation life, I was clicking about on the internet and I saw those beautiful chambers made by Intank and if I was in America, I would absolutely recommend you purchase through Intank. They're very, very reasonable in pricing. It's really just the shipping to Australia that becomes a bit of an issue. If you're not in America, I mean, you, the Intank will ship to you. That's not an issue at all. I'm not saying abandon Intank. I love their products, I love the quality. But if you're looking for an option to um, get it made yourself, they're pretty straightforward. If you wanted to get that made by a plastic place, you can show them the pictures of the Intank one and give them your measurements and I'll probably be able to come up with something. Alternatively, you can always rip out some egg crate and I was looking at making one of these out of egg crate myself when um, I saw Jason on my Facebook feed and I'm like, 
Jason, can you make me something a bit prettier than um, Egg Crate? And uh, I think we can all agree that he's absolutely done that. So the Idiot Proof Rift Tank's starting to evolve a little bit. I recognize that, copying a little bit of heat online about uh, this tank's probably gone beyond being idiot proof. I'm still sticking to my guns that an idiot could run this tank. But by all means, any one of these additions you would not have to add, whether it be the media chamber, even the skimmer, you could take out half to three quarters of those corals, just have the pair of clowns in there. And uh, realistically, anyone that's got an IQ of above 10 would be able to run the tank. But um, if you wanna see the Idiot Proof tank evolve into the next generation of uh, reef keeping and use it as a good opportunity to get your foot in the door to reef keeping and then evolve and see where it takes you and um, grow some more um, exotic corals or keep some more harder to keep fish, then I think this platform has the ability to grow and uh, adding something like that media chamber there just gives us a few more options on uh, nutrient export and some things like that. So all in all, a short, sharp little video just on a minor little upgrade we've done to this tank. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes over the next um, month or so with that extra little bit of media in there. The parameters in the tank have been fine, but I'm hoping that'll just help keep them fine. Um, it will take a little bit of the pressure off the manual water change each week, which ultimately is a good thing for our idiot proof tank. If it means you do one thing every four weeks, which takes pressure off the one thing you have to do each week, I think that's a win. If you've got other ideas or suggestions or thoughts on that, feel free to pop them in the comments section down below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, guys, if you're yet to do, please consider subscribing. Costs you nothing, takes two seconds of your time. Just hit the subscribe button down below and um, you'll really help me out. I'd appreciate it. Till next time, guys, though, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.